Welcome, Tony Cedrus, officially to Cape Talk. It's good to have you. You're an icon. You're a big man, a big con uh, contributor to music in this in this country, in the city. And you've taken our heritage with you all over the world and told everybody about the city, its music, and its people. It's good to be able to celebrate you today by way of an interview. Thank you. But I think a more fitting way to celebrate you is an award. Is it the first award that you received from government? Yeah. Khoisan music is so rich, though. Uh, it's it's coming. Play us something rich. Play us horizons. <laughs> Tony Sidris, Horizons. In a morning mist of a sun Arising slowly Like a feeling of old, of old In a morning mist of a sun Arising slowly Like a feeling of old Of old At the dawning of a future Will she ever be Continent of old Given birth to all of mankind, lasting endlessly, yet no love in return, in return. Crying in the wind of chains, is Africa to be always ready to give? One more time Three more times Once is not enough for a human A human specimen Always wanting more and more and more, more, and more. Yes, the day has gone for us to refrain history and thy will be done be done <laughs> le, 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 le. La 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 I Oh I ya le La 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 Ya pat kun 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 den 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 ni le I la 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 
And you always end of that song with amen. Amen. So be it. You are lamenting the state of the continent with that Yo, song. Oh, man. Always. What, what are you singing about? It was absolutely clear to me, but I had the privilege was, was of listening to it a hundred <laughs> times so I can feel it and understand it it's completely. A, some, as, again, a small poem of, of what is really, what we took out, we cannot, uh, uh, at Kimberley, we still open. Huh? It's a great gata that we took out. We can even take out more. Uh, that's my story, man. I, th I think it's such a deeply powerful song in the and lyrics. And we got so much love to in return, you know. Also, man, just sit with I, with I, with I, don't go bossa boko. You know, we're sitting with that thing. Uh, what, what are you saying? Also, man, we're sitting with that. that we got a yeah, lot of we got love, so love in, in return. return. In ret give, oh. That means uh, they came and and rape and murder in this place, and we still got uh, to say. Uh, that's Bishop Tutu's thing, man. The TRC and all of that. Forgive. Yeah. Forgiveness. You've got forgive that forgiveness there. Forgiveness is freedom also, no? Amen. You have to <laughs> that uh, detoxify yourself and then you go out there. No, I agree with you completely. Amen. Tony Sidras, uh, my guest, former guitar and keyboard player with Paul Simon. I want to talk about Paul Simon. You traveled, you toured with him 1987. Yeah, a couple of... Uh, yeah, till 2012. Yeah. Something like that. You've done quite a couple of tours with him. You've never been in the studio with him. You've never recorded with him. Yeah, we, uh, we did. Did uh, you record did, with him? Okay. Uh, yeah, we did two albums. It was uh, Rhythm of the Saints on there. Uh, the live uh, Central Park album. Almost like a triple album. Oh. The live Central Park, yeah. Okay. Uh, 750,000 people in that park. Yeah. Um, 750,000 Central Park. Yeah. Uh, Simon and Garfunkel had a million people a little prior to that one. Was that just Paul? Yeah, that were, no, uh, that was just Paul yeah, on yeah. his own with a with a very beautiful band: Michael Brecker, Stevie oh. Cat, uh, Armand Sabaleko, uh, Vincent Guinea from Cameroon. You promised us some Skinner as well, eh? No Skinner man. What stays in Las Vegas? What 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 plays in Las Vegas stays in Las Vegas. And you have to make a movie. But you promised the Skinner for man. Me to do Skinner, you must yes. give me a, a deal, a movie deal or a book deal. <laughs> no, Lester was here. He had a lot of listeners now. He's clever, man. I need you to skin us. No, Skinnering, yeah, because, you know, they're sitting ready with their lawyers there listening <laughs> to us. <laughs> Listen, what's it like performing for such a such a huge crowd? 750,000 must be huge, huge, huge. I mean, it's as far as the eye can see. Yeah, it was. It, and it was a free concert. I think that's why, too. Uh, all concerts, I think, should be free. Even Cape Jazz concerts will be free for people to come. Yeah, I, ag I agree with you. Uh, or very little money, you know, because they close the city. Uh, they close half of the city to do that, to get the people there. And in Canada, too, they close it for two weeks. And you walk. You don't drive in the city, you know, and you come and see really beautiful acts. But I, you were telling me something about somebody smoking pot in a bus. Now you don't want to tell me. We smoke pot in every tour bus. <laughs> Masekela's tour bus, everybody's tour bus. I'm saying you know, somebody specifically. They call it back in the day <laughs> because I've got that age now. <laughs> I'm but saying somebody specifically. His name starts with a P and his surname uh, with us is. Uh, uh, what stays in Las Vegas <laughs> plays in Las Vegas. Yes, yeah, so look at him. Eh? Okay, there wasn't a microphone between us when he when he told me the story. But there is the story about the balls that fell from the roof. And oh, yeah. That was funny. Oh, that was, that was tell funny, us, man. Tell us oh, that was he here on Cape Town uh, uh, Stadium? I don't know what happened. That was the last gig of the, the tour. And the roadies, our techs, they pulled that one on us. Um, there was the, 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 the waters, the, 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 the three backing singers. Uh, I don't know what tune it was. But long story short, they configured a move in the ceiling with a lot of uh, ping pong balls. Uh -huh. And they hanged it up and there was a contraption when the when the singers goes from oohs to ahs, they're gonna let go of those balls. And Paul was right in the middle there. Well, that ball was was a great visual because I saw the video afterwards right here in Cape Town State in the last gig, and uh, nobody knew it was going to happen, and everybody was jumping around to catch the balls on this because there was thousands of balls right where the instruments was, and it was a chaos for a <laughs> moment. And even the audience. Jammed in, and we checked. Everybody, was like, even Paul, we thought it was going to be like, pfft, you know, uh -uh. he's got the ball. And my tech, Andy Forrester, the best tech in the world up till today, great guy, he planned the whole thing. 
He, he told us afterwards. And then we so it sounds like it was a bit of a surprise to the people. For us, for okay. everybody, except for the tech. So had you, you held your oh. notes and, and stuff? Yeah, I was behind the keyboards. My, my, my mouth didn't have to be open. <laughs> Tony, where can we see you perform? We're missing you. I'm waiting for a gig from you, man. <laughs> okay. I'll that, do a that, solo that, gig that, there. That must happen. That with, must with, a guest, uh, with a guest. I'll uh, uh, do some storytelling in like I'm doing now. So are, are you saying gigs are, are few and far between? Right here, there's no... Uh, is it because you're charging dollars or, or no, what? No, no, no. The way powers. the infrastructure is in Cape Town for, for gigs is... You know what the problem is? The problem is the people don't want to pay for well, a sure. talent like you. Um, some people can't, and yeah. that you can understand. And some people won't. Uh, those are the Philistines that need <laughs> the education, you know? Um, and there's far too many of them. You know, and we have a big pool of musicians here that... Uh, People can just pick and choose from because they can bring the price down because if they don't get me, they get somebody as good as me or, or whatever. They will they will get a lower price because there's crazy, beautiful musicians here. Tony Sidris, of course, uh, born in Alsace River in Cape Town um, in 1952. Oh, there you go. Make your numbers. Uh, he has performed and recorded, uh, well, various people, including Paul Simon. Tell me about Harry Belafonte. How was Harry Belafonte? Harry well, uh, <laughs> this is not the story at all. Yeah, man. We promise we'll keep the secret. No, no. I mean, like, I, won't I, tell I, anybody. I, I, Come I, on. I was on tour with him just for about three months. And um, with his, with his uh, management, there was, you know, was, I was on that tour. F we made a deal. We're going to get so much and so much. And, and after that three months, the thing will go up. And it never went up. So I came to the rehearsal. I said, "We didn't. Be, we were not true to our word here, and I need to leave this organization." Because I told him, "I mean, like you walk with Martin Luther King and all of these people at Alabama, and if you can't play your pay your people properly, I won't be part of this." I'm so happy to hear it's a more universal you know. problem. I thought it was just Cape Town. Oh yeah, and uh, yes, and he let and you walk. Yes, because uh, I was determined to not to be uh, associated with that part. Of a, you know, like people stay in a in a band. That's what a lot of musicians do. They they just renew the the the, the band with the youngsters, and they will pay the same amount for for what they've been paying the other guys that was there before, and will go on like that for years. And I detest that kind of business with our artists. That's what's happening. I can mention names, but I won't. You can just see. Ju just explain what what you what are you saying? How is this manifesting? So the younger artists, they will get the same pay that you got when you left. So when he renews the band, he just keeps the wages the, the same. The costs, the costs are kept yeah. uh, the same. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're welcome, of course, to join the conversation with uh, Tony Cedrus. Um, you can call. Uh, I can't even see that number over there. It's a little too far. <laughs> 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 I, I've moved into another studio because there's like videos being taken of, of Tony, this particular conversation. I left my notes on the other side, but they've got the numbers on, on the window over there. And it's just too far for my flailing faculties uh, to get by. If, if, if it's the same like, <laughs> Clarence, it's the same like uh, minimum wage. Yeah. Minimum wage stays the same. It goes up no, I got a you. digital percentage every 12 years. I got you on that. So when you step into the gig... You must pay your so-called dues, and that wages will stay the same. It makes me sick when I think about it. And musicians take advantage of that. You know, they don't see the merit and the talent. I, I had to learn very fast. Everybody was up ahead of me when I grew up. And when I got into this, this, this music thing, I had to learn very quick. But I mean, it must be significant. Let me just give those numbers. 021-446-0567. 021-446-0567. 072-567-1567 for your WhatsApps. And 31567 for SMSs. Thank you for bringing those numbers a little closer to, to my eyes. Uh, how does, you know, taking a stance in the manner that you've taken a stance with Ari Belafonte, you promised me an increase. The increase is not forthcoming. I'm walking away. Yep. Is that a good move, a good strategy in, in, in the industry? Or yeah, because you know your, your capabilities and, and your merit in, uh, in what you're good at and who's looking for you in a sense of your quality of performance. Uh, that won't go away from you. People have very good reference. I've never got, uh, I always get uh, uh, gigs by reference. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Your work so, speaks for itself. No, it's, absolutely. That's that's yeah. that's how you must walk out yeah. when they're going to miss you. And by the way, when I walked out, I introduced another bass player to play in there and I got a keyboard player. You know, I just didn't leave that thing just oh, like okay. that. Maria Makeba. She's Maria was both a joy, the best. but she was also... She was very tough, but she was the best. Tough, she tough look, yeah. look after her musicians. She will even cook for them beautiful African food. What a beautiful mama. The back of the limo is full of pots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you serious? And she will she's ch cooking check herself. into a hotel where she can cook. Okay, self-catering. Oh, and, and, and if she invites you, you must learn this from, from elders. If she invites you to come, to come and eat and have a night with her at the, when she cooked and prepared. And if you don't come, which I did in Belgium, I never forget it. We were on tour. And I was crazy, and ever everybody went, and I was not there. Next day at the gig, we still on tour. Fuerkum. She never speak oh. to me for a month. Wow. Max. That must be tough. That was very <laughs> tough. Oh, I talk to everybody. I say, what can I do? They say, hey, <laughs> Mazi. <laughs> Let, let's talk about Cassandra Wilson. She's also a taskmaster. I oh, believe. she's uh, the woman. They are uh, amazing that I worked for. You know, they, 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 uh, she really respected our craft, our craft. When I say our craft, our style of play from here. Let me tell you that she's all African. She's from Mississippi, Jackson, Mississippi, mm. and she's from the village as well. And she has a place called Yellow Scarf, which have two, three floors like this. Which she gets youth involved in all wow. workshops. Yeah, I played there as well. Um, got this boots there called Justin Boots. The most boot country, man. Yeah, yeah. Mississippi and Texas and all that place. Cowboy. Yeah. Uh, she's amazing. Uh, she pushes our music. We call her Kaysan, not Kaysan. Kaysan, that's her sta uh, 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 backstage name. Uh, met incredible musicians through her projects. Uh, the the second, the first time I played with her on this stage in Cape Jazz, the uh, Billy them didn't want to give me a gig. They booked her and she sent them an email. I want Tony Sidras to be with me on that stage. Kason wants the Kason. Boom. Kason wants the Kason. I was actually chatting, chatting to Billy over the week. Uh, yeah. Billy's retired now. He's, I uh, believe so. You know, I problems with them you know it's billy domingo uh, one of the founding yeah. directors of the cape town international jazz festival they did, they did a lot of good but you know the way people go about things sometimes here's a know. comment in um uh, i'm just gonna go through some of the comments uh, i felt like i'm going to cry feel spiritual it's deeply moving that song that you played earlier horizons yeah, i want to know what comes first the music and the words wh what comes first music or the words or is it just perfectly coming into one place at the same time in a moment of inspiration no, I think it was, m yeah, more musical. Not the, it was the tuning, certain tunings, mm. of uh, guitar tunings, and that one string bow, thing, that uh, you will hear the the, the the bass note is just rings there, and there's frequencies in there. And I've been playing it for years, before my first record I put it on. Uh, so it's more frequency-wise. And it's that frequency that stirs the yeah, song. Yeah, right? for that particular piece. Mm. And I just wrote a, f a verse, 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 That's verse. That's the Dukum stuff, that frequency For stuff. sure. So it's an it's ancestor. So you master Dukum. <laughs> 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 the people that went before, they are there watching, you know. <laughs> the ancestors. What does occupying of Knof, Knoflok's Kral mean to Khoisan? That's one of the pieces of land that... It's a little bit troublesome now at the, at the, as we speak, but I'm sure we'll sort it out. There's Knoflux Kral and there's, uh, there's one in Woolsley, Woolsley area as well. Our people is just n not organized. Uh, you know, there's a piece of land and there needs to be infrastructure before people move in there. Otherwise... Where exactly is Knoflux Kral? You're asking me directly. Google it, man. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to do that, but you, you say there's issues around the, the yeah. place, and it's and it's steeped in what, Koi in Koi history? Yeah, but uh, people are moving there in the almost un uh, hundreds. Yeah. They're, they're, oh, okay. they're staking out that piece of land, which is pretty cool. Just the organization about it, it's it's still that infighting and, yeah. you know. There's another spot in Woolsley. Uh, Where there's issues around land? Around who controls that area. But you, 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 you are part of the leadership of the Khoisan movement. Is that correct, or is your partner? My part is not a, a leadership. Uh, 
my part is to do with Ngaru with the with the with the cultural part of our our history in is in art in the artistry of okay. it, okay. and the reconstruction of uh, like like Ben Peterson and myself and uh, cadres like Hilton, we are concentrating on the reconstruction of our musical instruments okay. and all of that tied in with uh, we've got this organization that is run by my partner and wife. Uh, Tanya Kleinan Sidras Irasa uh, and stems out of that as well is uh, Tanya Kleinan Sisa Irasa the institution for the reparations of the uh, is she a uh, queen of South Africa what is what is your partner she's she's high ranking within the Khoisan yeah she's a chief is she a chief okay. yeah and and how much higher than chief does it get PC what's PC <laughs> okay right so she's a chief in the Khoisan yeah. Khoisan movement Okay, and you are... An Paramount Chief PC. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. Paramount Chief, right. Okay, yeah, okay yeah. I got it. And you're a an cultural activist uh, in the... In, the in that movement as well. You know, she's been uh, very instrumental in keeping that part of, of our music and our artistry. We have sometimes problems in getting musicians to come, like it uh, was me and Jack and uh, uh, Stephen and... Uh, Hilton and that in the earlier earlier years of supporting that movement when we take a protest. I remember we uh, in 2012, yeah. we covered Jonathan Ribic's statue with black plastic bags. <laughs> you know, I don't know if you know this, but there, there's been some, some, some interesting... And just to draw attention to the name of Cape Town originally and all of that, and we gathered, we were going without a permit we we went up uh, at least street came we were playing and there was a christmas choir band we came right in front of the castle and we were and and the cops they were kind of really loving it and and joined us yeah you know, escort us right and we had this gooey guy with the table background out you will see on my on my facebook i still have the accordion with and there was bows and uh uh, uh what his name was there as well, the the poet uh, uh, Bradley and Sitters. Bradley was there who said that prayer in Parliament there at Lighty. Yes. Yeah, he was there with all his uh, Nama talk. You know, so I'm deeply involved in our uh, act since even I went to New York the first time. Me and Zenjila Khoisan, we were on WBAI radio every day with this Khoisan thing. W wasn't, wasn't he a presenter there eventually? Yeah, Zenzile we was running the radio Khoisan. station, so we, we were... Giving it to the New Yorkers. Now, now Zinzili at this moment in time is is representing one part of the Khoisan yep. nation, and then there's another part yep. of the Khoisan nation which is fight, for fighting against because Amazon. No, this quite for this check quite for. They cannot get together. Uh, there's always you quite for both of them. Yeah, you know they they are so. Is that ego thing more and positioning themselves for? But how can they, how can they get together if the one is saying this is sacred land? They shouldn't it's be going doing to this. It's going to take us land. a while because they're going to be forced into a corner that they have to go see. They even got uh, orders from the high court judges to say yellow mud be makakum yellow ni city or yellow ni government or yellow di mud amal um in tafel set. They got orders like that. I was in court when Judge Henry said that. You know. Judge Henny uh, said that the two of you must come to some yeah. kind of agreement. Is it like, is it about sharing? It's on a paper. Is it about sharing the spoils? Sharing the spoils or sharing the country. Or so this is not about sacred land. This is about money. <laughs> Amen. I'm asking the question. Because people are positioning themselves to, to think uh, the government is going to give them this million so that they can be in the right spot when that money comes. That's how this uh, system is working. So you're yeah. saying the issue of sacredness of land it is It will is go out the back door. You know, where's Alan, uh, Alan Busak was a, a, a beam of light for a brief second. You know, he disappeared. I was in that benefit concert when we, when we were gathering 20 million for him to come back home. And it was Paul Simon who arranged that concert with Chaka Khan, with everybody was there to give him money to bring home. And that money disappeared. So who can Zera know? Yeah. Huh? Yeah, that's what's happening up till today. Tony Sidris, my guest. Uh, we're going to chat Sorry with him. Sorry for guaranteeing on No, 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 no. <laughs> I, no, I think he has a message in. I love this chat. Oh, it's so informative. Um, and then Knopf Lokskral is somewhere between um, is somewhere between Hrabo and Hohuk. I've been there and it's quite interesting to see. I agree with Tony. There needs to be more organization. You mentioned the name Busak. Yeah. You were close to Paul Simon. 
There's an issue of 80,000 Rand that went missing in Errol. No, no, 80,000. I didn't say the number. 80, no, that, that's what we read about. Oh. That's what we read about in the newspaper. Oh, wow. 80,000. I just know I uh, was playing in uh, Madison Square Garden, the most famous arena in the world, with Alan Busak, and uh, the benefit concert was for him and, and for w us here. Would you say, uh, Errol, 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 you go first. I want to ask Tony if, if he thinks that Alan Busa got a bad rap, but you go first, Tony. Sorry, uh, Errol. Clarence, good morning, and good morning to see to Tony, two legends in one studio. Great stuff. Oh, yeah. You know, you <laughs> know, so, um, Tony and Clarence and the listeners, Alan Busak took the fall. Mm -hmm. That money was used amongst other things, to support the prisoners from Robben Island and mm -hmm. also the children that studied at UWC. Mm -hmm. And he took the fall for that. And that is why when he served his sentence, the very next day he was exonerated by Thabo oh, wow. And that, that is why also Trevor Manuel w wanted to take him to court for a chapter in his book. Wow. Alan Busak is a legend. He took the fall for the cadres and they treated him with disrespect. It was only and him that took the fall. It, uh, not, nobody else around him? Is, well, uh, well, look, others took possible? falls also, but they weren't sent to jail for it. Huh. You, you see, this was a cover-up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Dr. Busak... Really, he was given a very, very raw deal. Take thank us, you very much, Tony. Take us just deeper. You. Just take us deeper into your theory. Maybe it's a rabbit hole as well, Errol. <laughs> but just take us into your confidence here. Why? Why would he be set up in this particular manner? Yeah. Just repeat that, Clarence. Why would Why would Alan Busak be set up in this manner? He was destined for ambassador yeah. position at the United Correct. Nations. Uh, why Why do you Correct. think? Yeah. Look. Because it would have come out that where the money really went to. Mm. You see, and then he was set up. Obviously, he was said, listen here, yeah, you go to jail you'll see, you, and you'll get exonerated when you come out. And maybe there was a payment also. That I don't know. That's an easy one. Yeah. But the others <laughs> are all anecdotal. And yeah. you can ask anybody that was involved in the struggle to tell you the same story that I'm telling you. Thank you. Thank Edel's you very much. Appreciate your mind always. Uh, Errol's one of the, yeah, uh, the, the regulars. Through, through a children's fund. And then Paul has that organization, very good organization that uh, look after the, so, the so health of kids. So, so what did Paul Simon say when this drama hit the No, he, he just uh, moved out of that space because it's not him. It's, it's he's done stuff. his thing. He, yeah. He's done so lots of things to help. And he, he's like that. He's a person who will disconnect from you. He doesn't need that nonsense. Tony Sidris, um, I guess, in the studio. He's, of course, born uh, in Elsie's River. So Los many Losibos. So many great musicians <laughs> come from Losibos, come from, comes from Elsie's River. What was it about the place? Why did it gift us with Tony Sidris and Robbie Jansen and so many others? Oh, man. It, sure. Tony Vata. Yes, and when the floods came, you know, <laughs> when the river comes down, Elders River, there's a, oh yeah, my uh, on my new album, I've got a tune called uh, When the River Was Clear. Yeah. And it speaks about that, when the river was clear, we could swim in that river. And you're talking about the Elsie's River. Elsie's River, Los and, and you have memories of the river being clear. Very fresh. You weren't catching tadpoles. No You were swimming in the Elsie's River. Swimming in the river, and it ice up during the cold winters. Because I have to go through that river through school over the radio line. In the white area, there was my school. And my Bakle Samane White is a truck company school because we take the granata from the trees and the lemons <laughs> and stick it in the sucker and then sell it for us with the pellet gun. As we were in the lane, we sell for a little bit. It was a lot of fun, but I'm. Where he laid off, where he else is refused. Where he else is refused, but I can't even work on it because I sit down with the ski trekkers, the skitties. Man, yo. But anyway, it was like there was no electric. It was dark and it was rough. It was gangsterism. But the gangsters, like in District 6, they had a lot of respect for our community. I must say that. We knew what time to walk. 
in the night time, um, the church, you know, my, my family was very church orientated, so we had to pray a lot, you know. Uh, five sisters, three brothers. We, we got a we got a call. Let's let's uh, take Des, and then we're gonna have to wrap up. Unfortunately, Des, go ahead for for Tony. Thanks. Thanks. That's another Thanks, episode. <laughs> Tony, hi. Taking you back to the 1970s, I was oh. a and a a 16 year old, 17 year old young man. You remember us running youth evenings at the Y at the in y. Andy Richards. Uh, I sang. I was a singer and a piano player, and I sang that night. And I was accompanied by the the legendary, legendary Tony Cedrus on piano, Neville Guppy Abrams on the bass, wow. and Tommy Sidon on the Sidon drums. On I'm drums taking in. you back many years. Wow. <laughs> yes. Amazing drama. And I'll sing. I'll remember the song too. It's only a prayer away. <laughs> Thank you for that memory, Des. We have to wrap up. We're out of time. Yo. You should have called just a couple of minutes earlier. We could have <laughs> really gone down me memory lane. Side, uh, we've just uh, been allowed a little, a little tributary down memory lane. And I must thank you at this particular juncture for your sharing, your unselfish sharing, and a wonderful celebration finally acknowledged by the Minister of Arts and Culture in the province. Legacy Award to Tony Cedrus two weeks ago. And we know that there's a lot of musical life left in you. And we pray oh, for a lot more musical life left in you. There's a lot of guidance. There's a lot of relevance that we find in the music. We thank you. We love you. Hey, thank you so much for everybody out there. <laughs> Thank you.